For more than a decade, my next guest was the core of the Australian cricket attack and even years after his retirement is still considered the greatest fast bowler ever. He's put his life into print in the book Lily, which is just as well because he is Dennis Lily. <laughs> Indeed. How are you? Not bad, not bad. Yeah, I've not been bad. better. But... You're a bit fluey, I believe. Just a little. You sat back a bit then. <laughs> yes, I thought, well, oh, the customary <clears throat> kiss would have to go astray, I'm afraid. <laughs> but you're still here, what a trooper. <clears throat> I'm okay, yeah, I'll, I'll get through. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, obviously, we tried to replicate the chant as best we could. Now, in your heyday, in your prime, there probably wasn't or hasn't been anyone as iconic as you in cricket. How was it having thousands of people chant your name when you're out there on the pitch? Uh, pretty embarrassing, actually, particularly if you couldn't do anything when they were chanting, uh, <coughs> trying to will you on, and all of a sudden nothing was happening. It was uh, almost embarrassing. Um, I mean, you didn't notice it much. The only time you noticed is when you're walking back, and, you know, it was great to know that they were, you know, really there for you, to really sort of try and lift you. Um, but once you hit your mark, concentration took over, you didn't hear a thing. And the next thing was sort of once you'd bowled, uh, if you got hit for six, then <laughs> there was nothing. And if you sort of bowled a good ball, then you heard a bit of a woo, and that was it. Then you walk back again and try again. Do you think things have changed now because of that? Are there still the theatrics of cricket that there used to be? Um, I mean, I didn't sort of see it as theatrics. It was uh, just something that was real, a feeling more than anything else. You just got a bit excited if you got a wicket and... Uh, you know, guys still get very excited when they get a wicket, and I think that's part of it. I mean, they're not as bad as Merv. I mean, you know, <laughs> how do you like that bloody hairy <laughs> tongue down Tongue in the ear. Nice. Yeah, I mean, at least we kept it fairly reasonable. Um, you know, some of the, all the Brett Lee stuff, I think it's fantastic. It's just, it's a great feeling. It means you really want it. Now, what about in the days when you were, used to play, Australia used to play England? Is it, do you think it's more or less intense when the, when the guys play today? I think it's always intense if you're playing for your country. Um, was the rivalry stronger, do you think, in your days? With England and Australia, uh, no doubt. I mean, England was a very strong side in those days. England at the moment has not enjoyed much success for a long time. In fact, uh, you know, really, um, Australia has, has just uh, really taken over as, as the number one nation um, and has done for some time. And there's not much else between Australia and, and the rest. I mean, there's a big gap. There's not, not much that, in between that that can actually challenge Australia. So it's pretty interesting. <laughs> when I talk to the young lads, uh, young fast bowlers, about, you know, England, Australia, it's a great, you know, you, you, a great competition. They sort of look at me like that and I think, geez, you know. But in those days it was because they were the yardstick. Well, you England described was some of those games as, as wars. It was like playing a war. Well, that's the way I thought of it. I mean, uh, you know, I, I just reckon that uh, if you're playing Australia versus England in those days, it was the Ashes. To me, that was the only real Test cricket. Um, that was what Test cricket was designed to be. And so it was war. I mean, any contest like that to me is war. You've been described as being a very ruthless bowler. Do you think that's a fair description of, of you in your heyday? Oh, I hope so. <laughs> no. <laughs> no um, I mean, what's ruthless? I mean, ruthless is... Uh, Bowling really hard. Yeah, I mean, gee, that's really bad, isn't it? I don't think anyone should really bowl that hard. Um, <laughs> I think if you're out there and, you, you know, you're playing your sport and, and, and you're trying to help your country win, I think ruthless is perfect. Um, you know, you, you should be out there to win at all costs. And, uh, yeah, I certainly tried to, and uh, I know most of my teammates felt the same way. And I'm sure if you, you talk to people that are playing sport today, if they're really into it, they'll be ruthless in their endeavour. Now, you had a great <coughs> partnership, of course, with uh, legendary wicketkeeper Rod Marsh. And I think in the, the test history books, 95 times bowled Marsh... Uh, oh, the court Marsh bowled Lily. He'd love that. He'd love that, wouldn't he? <laughs> but you've also... Uh, the the uh, friendship on the field also uh, transcribed across to uh, the legendary drink record that Marshy held for many years. Yeah, that was an interesting one. I, I knew he was uh, trying to tackle this record that Doug Walters had set uh, a couple like of 44 years. 44 cans? 44 um, from Melbourne, to, uh, I think it was Sydney, Sydney to London. 24 hour trip I think in those days. Um, so it was one every half hour. It's a fair drink because they reckon <laughs> they're worth at least two or three in the air. Um, and they were cans. Uh, 
Anyway, Rob was about to attempt it and I thought, you know, this shouldn't happen. The guy's going to be a mess. So the night before, we had to travel across to Melbourne. Uh, there was a function on for Qantas. Uh, from there, we had, the next day, we had to go up to Sydney. I thought, well, on the plane, if I challenged him to rum, which I'd done before and he'd never tried rum, uh, but he said, one day I'll, I'll take you on on rum. He drank beer, that was all. Um, I thought this will finish him. So I got him on the rum and uh, he had a big night on the rum, out to the function, still, I went back on beer then. Went out that night, took him out sort of pretty late. Next thing is, uh, I thought, Phew, I've gone to bed, I'm, I've collapsed, I've had enough. And uh, next thing I get the phone call from his room at 11.30 in the morning, he said, mate, ready to go? He said, we're going, we're going to the pub next door for a counter lunch and a few beers. I thought, oh, this man is strong. Anyway, it didn't stop him. He then went up to Sydney, met with Dougie in the bar, had a few with Dougie beforehand, none of these counted, <laughs> on the plane. And then just uh, had the pace setters there. It was all set up beautifully, ready to go. <laughs> pace setters. And drank all the way there. Um, and got there. Got the 45th one in just as we were landing, uh, to the applause of the cabin crew. <laughs> <laughs> it was yeah, a real it. trooper. Nicely done. Now, your legendary status has even made it to, to the modern era. And uh, Tom Gleeson, who was on uh, earlier tonight, has a character on uh, a, t a 10 TV show called uh, Skit House. And his character is called the Australian Fast Bowler. Moulded very much on your image from, uh, from the 70s. We've actually got to have a look at it here. If you haven't seen it before, check this out. My, lads My cat has climbed up the tree, but now he can't get down. Can anybody help him? It's the Australian Fast Bowler. Stories, highlights, lowlights, and uh, plenty more in the autobiography. Lily, it's out now. Dennis Lily, everybody. Thanks, Dennis. Yeah.